up, Humanoid Nation? So today's video is by StatRock. They had 10 occasions where WWE's slash, not slash, WCW hype didn't live to fans' expectations. Well, I can think, yeah, they can only put 10 because there's more than 10, but will, if they put more than 10, we'll be here all fucking day. Yeah, so let's see what they got. Let's full screen this and let's do this shit. Hey guys, thank you for watching. Oh, Slack Rock, Rock not you Stat know, if Rock. One thing WWE are masters of, it's hype. They know how to make something feel like the greatest thing in the world. Sometimes they're a little too good for their own good. See, sometimes things just bomb. Oh and God, WWE fake razor. Like egg on their face. With Cougar. that in mind, here are ten occasions where WWE. Oh, uh, Rikishi's face heel the turn, turn wasn't that bad. Number ten. I liked it. Fake Kane storyline. The reason for the fake Kane storyline actually makes a little sense. It corresponded with the release of Sino Evil. May 19. Debut just 10 days after so he's forever in bed in my head because he wouldn't shut the fuck Fate up. Kane, played by Luke Gallows, was supposed to represent the inner demon of Kane and bring Kane back to the dark side. It didn't. Almost like he wanted Kane to embrace the hate. Sound familiar? Unfortunately, the only thing he represented was failure. The pair would have just one match together at Vengeance that year. Interestingly enough, Fake Kane won the match. The storyline would be dropped the very next night with fake Kane being unmasked and unceremoniously and kicked out. out of the building. It was a failure because no one really cared at all. The nope. fans were so dead to the storyline that Vince killed it as soon as he could. Luke Gallows must have impressed someone at least, as after another stint in developmental, he would return to Texas before CM Punk cleaned him up and he became just plain old Luke Gallows. Number 9, Chris Jericho's 2011-2012 comeback. Chris Jericho yeah. has been a contender for the most He's better now. The one from but when he came back in that time, he was out as pretty a much useless. One. There were vignettes leading up to the debut that talked about the Save end of the us world. Save us, Y2J. Two creepy little kids. The reason it bombed so badly is because it turned out it was for Chris Jericho. It made no sense. It would later emerge that the vignettes were supposed to be for a debuting Sting or return. But that was like years Jericho later. Jericho also refused to acknowledge the vignettes. He didn't speak a word until a few weeks into his debut. There were no seriously bad consequences here, at least. Number eight, Quang, the disappointing ninja. Oh, Quang! His start with the short lived When you got a Latino ninja playing a ninja, was the that's fucked up. Asian wrestler, complete with mist, despite being Puerto Rican. What is it with WWE and casting Puerto Ricans as other stereotypes? Who ever heard of a Puerto Rican bullfighter, let alone a Puerto Rican ninja? WWE would hype the debut with video packages before Quang made his debut at the 1994 Royal Rumble. Fail. He had a decent showing against Owen Hart before being unceremoniously ejected from the Rumble, along with everyone else, by 7th entry Kevin Nash. Fans just weren't interested and he never had a chance with a debut like that. The character lost matches against big names such as The Undertaker. Well, oh, you put him against The Undertaker. Rome, of course he's going to die. He would return to the ring not long after, unmasked, to ally himself with Razor Ramon. And then later, Lost Buddy was going to shock the world. Shockmaster was a replacement for the injured Road Warrior Hawk in the War Games match that Sting, Dustin Rhodes, and Davy Boy Smith were about to have against Sid Vicious, Big Van Vader, and Harlem Heat at Fall Brawl. And he fell on his ass. Sting hiked up the debut with the now infamous line, Our partner is going to shock the world because he is none other than the Shockmaster. And then the shock really came. Shockmaster was supposed to smash his way through a wall in an impressive feat of strength, but misstepped and stumbled on live TV, losing his helmet. Fred Ottman, the man behind the mask, tried Try to play but the damage was done, and no one could take Shockmaster seriously. Not even with that. To earn the victory. Even if he didn't fall, no one would take him seriously with that glitter WCW helmet. would poke fun at the gimmick with Super Shockmaster, also played by Ottman, and Ottman would be, in kayfabe, the nephew of the Shockmaster. The character was briefly revived for an episode of the Edge and Christian show that totally reeks of awesomeness in which Edge and Christian coached Ottman to make the entrance one last time and get it right this time. I missed Number that. Six, who ran over Stone Cold Steve Austin? Yeah, During bro. the 1999 Survivor Series Stone Cold Wait, Steve Triple H and Rikishi were driving. In a storyline that would drag Supposedly. on seven solid months. There was plenty of speculation about who could have done it. The then commissioner Mick Foley started an investigation and questioned many superstars. Fans finally got their answer when Mick Foley blamed the Rock, did it. only for Rikishi to confess that it was him. The angle bombed because it was another attempt to turn someone the fans liked into a heel. And I don't know, man. I like sense. the bad man. He was pretty cool. Along with Haku. And Haku. Triple H reveal himself as he the just, mastermind. They didn't give him a chance. Who was the man behind the oh, this fucker. manager? Hornswoggle became a running joke in the WWE, and it really isn't hard to see why. 
He's their go-to guy when they have a story and can't think of a finish. During the Nexus angle, the WWE introduced the anonymous Raw general manager as the group had a tendency to attack authority figures. The story lasted for a year and was suddenly dropped. WWE decided to revive the angle and give fans the conclusion they deserved, but probably didn't want. The anonymous Raw GM made a return on the 998th episode of Raw and was revealed to be Hornswoggle on a laptop on the Oh, for fuck's sake, I didn't even see that. This angle was plenty of disappointment. Number four, the gobbledygooker. The gobbledygooker oh, is one of the lowlights of the number four? Survivor Series, a show that saw the debut of The Undertaker. The WWE had a giant egg that would appear during the months leading up to Survivor Series. It would just sit there, and every so often someone would question what was inside and when it would hatch. The hype was building, and everything ended on that fateful night when Hector Guerrero, Poor Hector Guerrero hatched. Man. Gobbledygooker would make some appearances for the company here or there, and was one of the entrants in the gimmick battle royal of WrestleMania X7. First man so eliminated. You could argue he was part of the low light of another major event. Number three, Vince McMahon's illegitimate son. Oh story. man! Hornswoggle may be if the Mr. Movie, Anderson but didn't fuck over Randy Orton, it would have been something. WWE ran a story in 2007 that Vince McMahon had an illegitimate son. It was going to be a big deal for the lucky guy chosen. It was going to be a way to put him to the top of the card. The push was denied to Kennedy after a wellness violation. The WWE Kennedy pissed, pissed off Randy. Too far in to just drop the angle, so they went with their backup plan, Hornswoggle. The reveal didn't make a whole lot of sense and mostly led to comedy segments involving Vince and Hornswoggle. It would also be dropped when Finley would be revealed as the true father of Hornswoggle. Which still didn't make sense. Hornswoggle did, the angle was never mentioned again after the resolution. Number two, the higher power misfire. I the liked this. This was a big deal. I don't know. It's I enjoyed this. APA, the rise of the Undertaker. I marked out like a bitch when that when he unveiled himself. Let downs in WWE history. The infamous words, it was me, Austin, it was me all along, will live on forever when Vince McMahon was revealed to be the mastermind behind everything, including the kidnapping of his own daughter. I can see that happening. It's Vince McMahon. He's ministry an evil bastard. wouldn't last all that long. Undertaker would form a new stable called the Unholy Alliance with Big Show and, and go on to win some gold. The angle as a whole wasn't a failure, but that reveal sure was. Number one, fake razor, fake oh. diesel. A major blow to the WWE... The only person left standing is Kane, because he was fake Diesel. WWE decided to use this chance to do something they'd been planning for a while and turn Jim Ross heel. Ross would hype up... Man, a man, fire my ass! ...and Diesel and was bringing them home. Fans were so reluctant to turn Ross heel that he was quickly dropped from the angle, and the fakes were left to their own devices. They lasted only a few short months. Something big did come out of the angle, at least. Glenn Jacobs played the role of fake Diesel and would later go on to become the big red machine, Kane. Yes, folks, even back then, Kane was there too. The fake Razor Ramon was played by Rick Bogner. Well, guys, that's our list. What do you think? Bogner what didn't have not have a chance. You that may not have made our list. Go ahead and leave those in the comments below. Don't forget you can hit subscribe to get more videos just like this one. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And as always, they're pretty awesome. You gotta subscribe to these guys. Cause they do their they do their research awesomely. Yeah. So like I said, they can only do like ten things. Wait. WCW. They didn't put anything WCW related in there. Yeah, unless you mention like Kevin Nash going into uh WCW after the whole fake razor, fake diesel thing. But that was it. But there wasn't anything else though. Uh, I would like to add that Goldberg versus uh, Rock was overhyped. It wasn't that great. Same with Goldberg. The first Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar match was hyped. Even though both of them didn't give a shit at the end because both were leaving WrestleMania 20. Um, there's way too many. Oh, Scott Steiner debuting and fucking himself over and then being lower mid-card in WWE. Wow, remember when Scott Steiner showed up? It was huge. And then he went downhill. Yeah. But it was, there's a lot that I can't... I, there's way too many things to mention. Anyways, that's it for now, guys. Humanoid freak out. Humanoid out. Man, I'm stumbling on my, my words. I gotta finish this right now. Okay, take it easy, guys. Bye. Los chilenos no multiplicamos, hay un problema, lo solucionamos, por todo el mundo los chilenos andamos, de bonichoro ahí no paramos, tecnología muy avanzada.